Season 8 of Fortnite brought about some significant changes in how players choose their drop locations. The map changed a bunch, adding air vents and cannons all over the place. But also vending machines now give free loot, and ballers have taken over planes as the go-to vehicle for most of the game. Every week, there are changes being made to the map, such as more vehicle spawns being added, new air vent locations, and even updates to already existing POIs, mainly the block. In fact, there are so many changes that we can't even fit them into one discussion video. If we missed a change that stands out to you, definitely let us know below. So guys, let us take a look at what makes the drop location good in Season 8. We'll also analyze where pro players have been landing in the World Cup qualifier so far. So before we get started, this is Keith Allen Henson. You guys ready? Let's go. These are the best drop locations for Season 8 of Fortnite. In most public games and lower division arena matches, players tend to immediately drop out of the battle bus or they'll choose high pop zones so they can get into the action immediately. Obviously, if you're trying to win the game, fighting a bunch of players off spawn probably isn't the way to go. If you're trying to play more defensively and go for placement points, it's a good choice to wait for the end of the bus path to land in a more secluded spot. But if you're looking to play a bit more aggressively, then your best bet is to choose a POI near the beginning of the bus path with lots of loot. Just remember, if it's a common knowledge that a drop spot is good, more players will tend to land there. But in most of your games, even in Arena, you should still be able to find a good spot with little to no players contesting. While most of you probably already know this, ballers are being utilized at all levels of gameplay, especially Arena. If you manage to bring a baller with you to the end game, it provides quick, easy rotations at next to no cost. Since their introduction, many players have been asking for either a nerf or vault for ballers in Arena. Since they're far too useful, the gameplay is non-interactive and based on hiding. Epic has been trying to decide what to do with the ballers, and it's unsure whether we will see a big nerf or vault anytime soon. It seems that Epic wants the ballers to be used in competitive, so until it reaches a point where there is a downside to playing with the baller, it's a good idea to land at locations that have them. Even landing on the baller right at the start to secure is not a bad idea, as ballers tend to be grabbed up right at the beginning. We'll be looking at which areas have the most baller spawns and using that information to help discover the best drop spots in the game right now. Vending machines definitely got a buff this season as well. Being able to get one item of blue or higher rarity for free at the start of the game is a very strong mechanic. If you watch our best loadouts video, you'll see that we mentioned vending machines as being one of the best ways to complete your in-game loadout. So landing near them at the start of the game is a choice many players are making now. You can find a lot of success in your early game if you manage to get the right weapon out of the vending machine, such as an RPG, scar, or pump shotgun. You'll see that the number of vending machines in an area varies, with most POIs having around two. Others can go up to four. Either way, when looking for landing spots, we'll be considering locations that have at least two nearby vending machines. Baller spawns and vending machines are obviously not the only things to consider in a location. There are other factors, such as the amount of loot and material availability. Then there's ease of rotating out from the zone and mushrooms and coconuts for shields. We want to also consider natural rift spawns. While everything will be taken into consideration, we want to give a special focus to Season 8 specific factors. Paradise almost has it all this season. It can spawn up to four vending machines more than any other POI. There is plenty of each type of material to farm and you can use coconuts to fill up your shield, thereby saving the ones you find. Also, it has one of the few remaining natural rift spawns so you can rotate out quickly once you're done looting. Even if rifts don't spawn or get taken by enemies, there's a quad crasher in town. There's also nearby air vents to the northwest for when you need to move to the next zone. To top it off, there are 24 chest spawns as well, making this a solid drop for any number of players to acquire good items. We recommend taking a look at the vending machine loot as you glide in, just in case you see an item you like. Try landing either at the cactus chest in the middle or by the hotel pool if you like a vending machine along with your chest. Loot Lake has managed to become even better as the season progressed, and it has recently received another overhaul in patch 8.4. Now material has been added in more places as well as about 10 more chest spawns, putting that total to around 35. There are three vending machines inside the zone. Don't forget, there's also two usually unused machines just outside, so make sure to check them out on your way out to snag an extra item. One other thing that's unique about Loot Lake compared to other good spots is its central location on the map, which gives you a bit more time to loot and farm if you get circle favorite early on. The best spot to land at is likely the factories on the west side, since there's good material, two vending machines, and a few chests to loot. 
34 total chess spawns, 3 vending machines, and nearby baller spawn make Happy Hamlet another fantastic drop location in Season 8. With the sheer amount of loot available, it's pretty easy to end up with a nearly complete kit if you land here. Metal will be the hardest to farm here, and you'll likely need to find somewhere outside the town if you're looking to get to max material. It's a good idea to land and secure ballers at either the nearby racetrack or at the expedition camp before you start looting the town. But if you don't see players going for them at the start, you probably have some time to get items first. Another great location this season is Frosty Flights, due to it having the largest concentration of ballers in any area. Definitely the main reason to land here, there are 10 potential ballers inside the area, as well as an 11 just outside of it. Material takes a while to farm up here, since it's mostly metal buildings and a few rocks for brick, until you start to rotate out. But there's three vending machines nearby that can be used, as well as around 25 chests, so getting a solid kit should be easy. Landing at the hangars is likely the way to go if there are other players with you, just so you can more easily secure a baller. If you want to play a bit more aggressively, landing on the high ground can help you spot enemies below. The last drop location is more suited only for duels and solos, since there isn't too much loot available. But this area happens to be one of the best baller spots in the game, thereby making it a great drop by default. Specifically, it is the area with metal buildings north of the volcano. It should be relatively easy to get to max material since there's plenty of high resource giving structures here. And if you can't manage to get a baller, you can always use the volcano vents to rotate when you're done looting. Thanks to Epic Games, the replay files from the first two weeks of World Cup qualifiers are available. So we're going to be taking a look at where the final is dropped at, and hopefully we can come to a few conclusions after our analysis. Another thanks to Reddit user ArcaneFN for completing the painstaking task of downloading and playing dozens of World Cup replays. And green highlight, we've got games where the final is dropped at one of the five previously discussed locations. In red, we have games where the players landed at a baller location. As you can see, many of the locations we just discussed are being utilized successfully by pro players, even at the highest level of competition. While each player and duo likely has their own unique reasons for choosing their landing spots each game, there is no denying the playing advantages many of these locations contain. One spot that seems to be used by a lot of players that we didn't discuss is Tilted Towers. Players will drop Tilted on occasion when they feel they need some kills in their next game, which is why we see it pop up once or twice for many players. Players are less likely to hot drop Tilted in this World Cup games as well, which is why we might see this location work so well. In general, it's a very good spot this season, and there's plenty of material to farm. This includes a staggering 39 chest spawns and 3 vending machines for loot, a central map location, and a few vehicles on surrounding mountains if you end up needing one. Another spot we see a lot is Snobby Shores. Honestly, you need to ask the players that landed there why they did so, because there aren't many redeeming qualities that we can find in this area. The best we can figure is that Snobby is an incredibly safe side of the map, and you probably won't run into many players while looting or rotating. That is the one likely reason why players are finding success there. When it feels like you're stuck in an arena and can't climb, the best landing strategy is likely to wait for the end of the bus path and then choose a baller spawn location, preferably one with a lot of loot. Vending machines can provide a high tier weapons that help you win the game, so if you don't mind a little competition, try landing in spots that have multiples. Epic Games isn't afraid to add or remove what makes spots great with each update, so it's good to keep in mind what makes a drop location good. This way, you can quickly adapt to future map changes. Hey, once again, this is Keith Allen Henson, and uh, follow me on Instagram if you guys want to connect. Thanks for watching, and good luck with your climb.